I don't know if everybody knows this who's listening right now, but you are part of really the greatest race in history. I mean, it's the one that's probably been viewed the most out of any race mm-hmm. in history. Um, the men's hundred butterfly in Beijing. A lot of people will know it for the race where Michael Phelps won, I believe it was his seventh gold medal at that stage and, mm-hmm. um, and won by one, one hundredth of a second. And it's, it's that picture of Phelps and Kavik at the end of that race that is kind of iconic most people yeah. don't realize that they gave out a bronze medal there as well, right? <laughs> yeah, and that was me. That's the exact story I tell. I, I tell people, you know that race that Michael Phelps didn't look like he won, but he won? Well, I got third in that one. And they're like, oh, that's a sick race. Yeah, and actually beat Ian Crocker, who was the world record yeah. holder at the time, by 0.01 also. So I was the guy in all those memes when Phelps is splashing the water and celebrating. I was the guy getting splashed by Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, though, I was actually up on the lane rope celebrating my bronze sure. medal like I'd won gold. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's the end of it. I want to I want to go to the kind of the start of it. Let's let's walk through this whole process of getting to this event and then racing the event as well. So, um, you know, you go in as one of the fastest qualifiers. I think you're in lane three, right? So you would have been, uh, what, third fastest qualifier. Yeah. And, um, and so you're, you're preparing finals are in the morning. So you, you have to go to bed all night and then wake up the next morning for the final. So talk to me about how you felt the night before and then how you woke up. Yeah. Uh, I think, before we go into that one, I think the lucky part for me was I was involved in the freestyle relay on the first night. Right. Um, so we got the, the Australian team, we got third in that one. And to do that one and get a couple of good swims under my belt made me a little bit more confident in our preparation that everything was going on track before the fly. Um, <clears throat> the fly in itself, I, I think I went ranked into the Olympics in the teens, late, late teens. So the goal for me was really just to make the final. Um, mm. so, so the heat, I went from, a, I think a 51, eight swimmer to a 51, five swimmer, um, and then improved again from a 51, five to a 51, three. So I kind of, my whole junior swimming career, I was really goal focused. I mean, time focused rather mm. than outcome. Um, but that does change a little bit at the Olympics. Um, so I was really happy with the way I was able to execute my race plans and continue to do PB and then PB. Um, the semi-final in itself, when you're racing a guy like Phelps, um, I was in the semi-final with him, and this is actually quite a good story. Um, semi-final, I was semi-final number one, um, and Phelps had just won the 200 medley, um, and he was doing, um, so he broke the world record, he's out there doing the medal presentation, so 50-meter right. 50 meter, 50 meter pool like that, he's out there on the dais, he gets his, gets his gold medal, waves to the crowd, throws his flowers to his mum, walks around, and then comes back into the marshalling room. So he takes off his um, medal presentation jacket, puts on the pre-race jacket, puts it on, puts on his headphones. The official goes, hey, Phelps, are you ready to go? He goes, thumbs up. So we just walk out <laughs> after winning a gold medal, breaks the Olympic record. Damn. I just I just think that sums up kind of the, the mental strength that he had for gold medals to not really affect his psyche um it was just on such a mission to just go out there and execute whereas for me after winning my bronze i didn't sleep for for the next two nights and i, I couldn't be controlled yeah he's, <laughs> a, yeah, that, he's a machine yeah just just over and over first one at the pool last one to leave and just the consistency it was, it was amazing to be part of his first his seventh and his eighth gold medals at the olympics well i was going to say that i was actually on the pool deck i was coaching and and I was there with an athlete who, who had success too, but he, um, what I noticed is there was a change in the way that the, the people were viewing him on the pool deck as the meet was going on. So by the time he got to you, I felt like there was a real sense that Phelps was invincible. Like he was unbeatable mm. even before the race itself. So what, where was your mental state at that point when you're in the ready room with him? Um, I, I was lucky enough to kind of separate myself from the Cavich and Phelps and Crocker battle that those three had going on. Mm-hmm. I was just a 21 year old Aussie with like a little dreadlock coming out and this <laughs> big mop of a hair who was just going about his own little thing. Um, I just focused on myself, to be honest, Brett. I had I had a really good playlist. I just put my headphones in and just went out and executed. Um, the only the only thing that my coach um, Grant, I mean Glenn Baker, and then Grant Stolweiner at the Olympics, all they said to me was just not try too hard. We understand yeah. that it is Olympic final, and all you want to do is go go really fast. Just let it happen. Con- um, be confident in like your stroke length, um, your technique, and then that'll that easy speed will just come without having to force it. 
did it did it go like that did you get in the pool and and feel the flow that first 50 yeah completely even more so on the second 50 um i'd practiced back end speed 50s thousands of times before that 100 fly so having touching at the 100 meter mark turning i knew exactly how many kicks off the wall i was going to do i knew how that first stroke was going to feel the next two strokes up breathing and then to get into my stroke i'll take you know a breath down two up head down and then I'd start working into the wall and it was just like I'd practice a thousand times. So that was the the easy part, the back end. Yeah. You you were in uh three and Kavik was in four. He got out super fast. Did that affect you in any way? I don't think so. I I turned away from him, which mm. I think was a good thing. So my back was to him. If I'd have seen him, I would have felt like a little like I had to rush, but I still felt in control at the turn. Now just before we get to the end of the race, before this Olympics itself, had you raced these two men before, like Kavich and Phelps? Um, two th- I had, but I didn't make a final. 2007, I swam the 100 fly, but I only made the semifinal. So I had never stood on the blocks and raced the world championship final for the 100 fly, no. So this is your first real big experience next to these two men. Um, mm. you know, as we said, Phelps has got this awe around him. Kavik's gone out like a machine and, and you're staying pretty relaxed at the 50 meter mark. It sounds like. Yeah, I was pretty fearless. Um, in hindsight, um, I was just, just didn't let things affect me. I was, I was so confident in my preparation and confident in what I could achieve by myself. I also didn't have the expectations of having to win a gold medal. Um, you know, no one back at home thought that that was going to happen. So for me to even just be in the final was was a success in itself. Did you feel like there was a probability that you could you know, beat one of those guys? Like you said, Crocker was the world record holder. Then you have Phelps and Kavik. Uh, did you feel like you could get on the podium? No. Nah. No, at, at probably at, probably at no stage did I think that. Even had my mate um, Ryan Pinney, who was in the final as well, and just doing that with him was was pretty special. Wow! So you swam fifty point three. You've hit the fifty meter wall. You're coming back. Do you feel like you're swimming faster than that at that stage at the seventy five meter mark? You you feel like this is your best swim? Yeah, I could tell I was putting it together perfectly. Um, and then all I had to do was just maintain stroke length, um, just not let my let, let my technique fall apart. Just continue to do exactly the same thing for every stroke and just get get on the ball with my head down. Did you notice Kavik ahead of you? Did you feel like you were behind? Was there any panic or were you just focused on the wall yourself? I was focused on the wall myself, but in saying that, I had raced uh, post-Olympics. You raced Phelps, Phelps a couple of times. And what happens with Phelps is when he starts crawling on your back or you, you typically lead him out the first 50. Mm. And as he's coming over the top of you, you start to see little bits of splashing in right. your lane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, that, and that's when things start to fall apart. Yeah. But the, at this stage, at, at the 80, 90 meter mark, you're not feeling that. You're just focused on what's no. ahead of you. Yeah, just focus on myself every stroke. Yeah. And then when you hit the wall, did you feel, it, well, I mean, did you just need to the, see the time to get reassured of what happened? Um, I, I, you know, when you, when you do a good swim, you know, you've done a good swim. Yeah. Um, I t- touched the wall and I just automatically saw the number three next to my name. And then I was fist pumping and celebrating to the little pocket of Aussies sitting in the crowd. Um, it literally felt like a gold medal, you know, like when a good swim or a gold medal swim doesn't hurt. It felt yeah. like that. Wow. Mm. Did you, um, when was the first time you watched it back? Like in terms of, you know, seeing the result between Kavik and Phelps and how close you were, is that as you were walking out of the pool? Um, I don't think so. I, um, I just kind of move on, um, straight away. Um, I, I don't typically sit in the moment too long. Um, of course I celebrated and was super happy with it, but I, I didn't sit down and um, reflect on the, the physical race too much, to be honest. But I mean, in terms of Kavik and Felt, obviously, obviously there mm. was, you know, that moment that they had, did you know, did, yeah. when did you see that the first time? Yeah, I, um, we were in the, we we're waiting to go out to get the medals. Um, and now watching the finish over and over, um, oh, cause right. there was some, something that was happening with Omega. Um, I know, Kavich, I think, thought that he got his hand on the wall first. Um, so I think there was a bit of a protest, but, mate, I'll let them have it. I'll, I'll take my bronze and, and be happy with that. Was there anything going on while you guys were waiting for the medals? Like, was Kavich saying anything to you or anything like that? Not, not to me personally. I think it was more to the officials. Um, and I know that some of his team were, were taking it up with the officials. Wow. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was naive, Brett. I was, I'd won my gold medal. Yeah. They can have it. <laughs> you got yours and ran away, but yeah. yeah. When did it become a situation where you were kind of cut out of the conversation? I mean, you've got this medal, you feel amazing and your family and friends are celebrating, but everyone else in the world is just focused on what happened between first and second. Did you, did you start to notice that? Um, not really. I was, mate, I was pumped. I, I never, I never was like, you know, very um, fam famous for a swimmer in Australia or anything like that. Um, this was my biggest achievement of my, my swimming career. So I was just happy to, to just do it for myself and do it for my family and mates. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a crazy event. I mean, looking back on it now, do you still feel the same way about it? like you gave it everything you had at that point? Yeah. I, I would say I had the perfect preparation and the perfect heat semi and final races and um, yeah, couldn't be happy with it. Yeah. It must be, must be, uh, you know, a good feeling to know that you were part of one of Phelps's, you know, eight gold medals and just in that race and with him and, uh, I mean, it was a, it was an incredible moment in time, wasn't it? Mm, it really was. It was um, very unique what he was able to achieve. Um, like I said before, just the, the mental fortitude to stay so relaxed and so determined over that seven day period, race after race, knowing the kind of the mental and physical toll that winning a medal takes on you at the Olympics, that just his ability to back up was something else. Yeah, mate, I just watched uh, his documentary that came out just a couple of days ago mm. where, where he talks about each event, each race that he swam at the Olympics, not just the medals, but the ones that, uh, you know, he competed in. I think it was, I think it was like 30, 30 swims at the Olympics. I mean, something crazy. Like that. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, he gave a breakdown of the, of the race. Have you seen or heard the footage of, of all of that? Nah, I'll have to watch it. What do you say? Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously just the focus is on the, the battle between him and Kavik, you know, just, yeah. he, he breaks it down in terms of what happened there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was just an incredible race, really. I've got to mention in his book. I'll take that. Oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read it and as I was going through, I saw my name. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got the bronze, mate. He had to mention you, of course. <laughs> 